Yes. Hey everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Benjamin, also known as Wings. Um, tonight we have a talk by Michael Collins. We have a few words to say before we get started with that. Um, tonight's talk is called Matrix in 2020. Um, we'll start off by uh, just quickly saying, so Plug is an independent group um, that we, that, um, I've lost my words. Um, basically, we're a Linux and open source advocacy group, so we uh, do regular talks on Linux and helping you learn Linux and open source. Um, uh, we have optional membership, so you can sign up and be a plug member for $10 a year for concession or $20 a year for normal. Um, if you are wondering whether you are eligible for concession, yes. Um, we also have this space generously provided to us by uh, Space Cubed. So Space Cubed is a co-working company. They have various spaces um, where you can do co-working, which if you're not familiar is essentially you know, bring your laptop, bring your gear, and they provide you with a nice distraction-free workspace and fast internet for you to get your stuff done. Um, so they're really, really good to us. So if you're interested in that at all, please check out Space Cube's website. Um, the facility we're in right now is called Riff. Uh, details and URLs over here, I guess. Um, other than that, uh, we have various events coming up in the next couple of months, which would be very excited if you guys would be uh, interested in coming along to those. So um, uh, we have uh, Posh, so for open source hackers, there is a plug and Posh uh, hack afternoon happening on the 13th of September. I mean, you guys can, can see this. This is our regular event schedule. We have uh, the second Sunday of each month, we do a, a hack afternoon. Um, the, this is the second Tuesday month where we'll usually do a talk or a presentation here at Space Cube or Riff, being the same venue. This venue. Um, and every second two months we do a plug in the pub. We go off to a different place, try to rotate a bit. We're going to the current bar in Yokai, March 4th. Yeah. Uh, so we do try to we do try to move plug in the pub around so that if you are in a different area of Perth that you might not might not necessarily be able to get to those events. We do move them around, so north, south, east, west of the city. Um, this one will be a, a Saturday the 19th for Software Freedom Day. Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in finding out those events, uh, obviously we are a meetup. Uh, we are also trying to cross post our events to Facebook now, uh, but you also can go to plug.edu and look at our events page, and that is the master list of all events that we do. It is the first place that gets updated for any of those, so it's the best place to look. Um, it's a Google Calendar, you can subscribe to it. Yeah. Um, I guess that's probably it for me. Um, so we'll introduce our speaker for the night, Mr. Michael Collins, who joins us from Chat Oasis slash Gotcha, slash Perth Chattel, slash the other things. Um, and I don't have the slide in front of me, but I would like to just quickly say that uh, to acknowledge that we are meeting on the lands of the Wajik people uh, and to pay, up, pay my respects to their elders past, past present, and emerging, um, and to the continued contribution they make to this land and society. So, cool. Um, all right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, big thanks to Plug for having me. Oh, what's going on? Right. Uh, we would also like to pay, uh, pay our respects to Julian Assange, Australia's greatest journalist, uh, who was betrayed by his own country and offered up as a sacrifice to the U.S. government. It's not really a joke. It's a start. Uh, in the next week, the UK courts will start to decide whether Julian will be extradited to the U.S. I would encourage everyone here and everyone listening at home to act. Call 
write an email or a social media post, make sure you do something in the next week. Do something is better than doing nothing. Uh, I know it feels futile, but you should try anyway. Uh, you don't want to find yourself on the wrong side of history. <laughs> okay, again, the rest of it will be more of it. Sweat. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael Collins. I am an advocate for free and open source communication systems that really let people own their own communications again. I am also the creator of PerfChat.org, Perf's number one public matrix service. I am also an Australian journalist. I am also oh wait, there you go. I'm also an Australian journalist. I am also a software developer. I am also a comedian. I am also a black belt. Uh, and I am also a part owner of a new venture, which we'll be previewing at the end of this presentation. Okay. So here's what we got. We've got updates to metrics since the last presentation. We also have news and moderation adventures of perfchat.org. And we also have future plans for the matrix network. And then finally, we'll do the commercial time. That's, that's the end, don't worry. <clears throat> OK. Uh, where do we begin? The internet sucks. It oh, sucks. Let me talk about why it sucks. It's turning into a series of very, very large hierarchies with only a few owners. Zuckerberg pretty much owns 50% of the internet right now. But that's kind of whack. Where's the antitrust laws? God, I mean that. Uh, surveillance is rampant and unchecked. Most platforms you interface with online will try to vendor lock you somehow. However, they're going to get basically. What is Matrix? Matrix is not a product. It's not an app. It's not a company. And it's not a service. Matrix is an open protocol for secure and decentralized communication. It's an effective replacement for email. It's an effective replacement for the phone network. It's also an effective replacement for all of most collaboration tools you use, like Discord or Slack. Anyone is free to create server or client software that conforms to the matrix standard. So just like with email, lots of people have different email server software, and lots of people have different email clients. So matrix is kind of like that, where anyone can just make their own server or client software. Matrix news. It's no longer called Riot. Riot is now Element. Why is that? Well, it's 2020 now, and there are a few too many you know, actual riots happening, so um, we decided to rebrand. <coughs> That's cool. And we've got this, I don't know, it looks like a flower or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet. Uh, what else has changed in Matrix? We now have mandatory TLS for federation. So when you create a server on Matrix, you cannot federate with other servers unless that traffic is encrypted with an SSL layer. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, OK, sorry. Another big upgrade we've had is cross-signing. There's a few people here that were on Matrix in the good old days, before cross-signing, where if you had three keys and your partner had five keys, that would basically mean you would need to compare eight OLM fingerprints between you before you could verify each other's identity. You would have to compare eight different numbers. It was, it was bad. It was really unusable. Um, but now we have cross-signing. So you can basically cross-sign your devices against each other. And uh, the process of that is identical to verifying with anyone else. And uh, if you have two or more, uh, basically that means you only need to compare one key with the person you're talking to. You don't have to compare five keys, or eight keys, or ten keys, or whatever you've got. Just one. Just one. It also means that if you have an array of devices and they're all cross-signed against each other, that basically constructs a web of trust. And if you have one of your devices where you log out and log back in, you can basically verify it with your previous devices to add that device to the web of trust. So the people you're talking to don't need to re-verify if you change one of your devices. Oh, it's so much better now. Yeah, don't even worry about how it worked before. It's, it's way better. What else has been changed with the end -end encryption? Uh, another really annoying thing that used to happen back in the day was 
you would jump on Matrix for the first time and you would try and message a friend in an encrypted room and then it would spit tons of errors at you saying you have not verified this key and it was just a nightmare and nobody really knew how to navigate through it the first time. So now it's more like Signal or WhatsApp where it just gives you a soft warning that you haven't verified with this party and you're free to do it later, basically. You can start talking before the verification. That's incredibly handy for user adoption, basically. We also have emoji verification. So instead of uh, comparing a key string, you can just compare emojis, which is a lot easier. We also have QR verification, just like you get on Signal or WhatsApp, where someone has a mobile device and they have a QR code, and you just scan that, and it tells you if the key is right, basically. Uh, what else has changed? The end-to-end -end encryption is no longer in beta. It's beta for a while, but uh, we basically audited it, and it's good to go. Uh, after we found out it was good to go, we made it the default. So now if you start a one-to-one -one conversation with someone else on Matrix, it will be end-to-end -end encrypted by default. That's a nice upgrade. Cross-signing demo. One lucky contestant, we've already picked one contestant's wings. <laughs> It'll show us how to, oh no, no, no it's, sorry, it's not wings, it's, uh, it's Nick. Yes. Nick will show us how to yeah. <laughs> verify. So let me go to the secret plug fray phrase room. If you're a plug member and you haven't been invited to this room, let us know, you can be invited to us. And um, there we go, here's Nick. So we see in the corner here, we see a bunch of green shields. I've already verified with my own devices, wings, not, et cetera. Now we're going to verify with Nick. Ready, bud? Awesome. Yes. All right. So I'll click verify. Boop. And in a few moments, you should see a, a prompt on his screen. Once the service really loud, yeah. it's start verification. Okay. Whoops. There we go. Mm -hmm. I can still type in the meantime. It is normally instantaneous, but we are fighting some Wi Fi issues at the moment. Oh, no. Wi Fi's working, right? Can you watch it? Working it. This is embarrassing. It usually works really smoothly, like half the time, okay? <laughs> Just give it a chance. Yeah. Maybe just reinitiate it. Just try it, try again. Oh, the lights came on. Verification canceled. Let's try one more time. Are people stressing the server route to room presentation? Maybe I don't know. Oh, there we go. What? Uh, Verify. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Okay. Verifying by emojis. Comparing emojis. Is yours bicycle dog flower big lion fold of an ant? It is bicycle dog flower big lion fold of an ant. So by doing this, you can basically prove that the software on both ends has been hasn't been tampered with. Now, there's no man in the middle basically falsifying keys. You can be sure that your message is only going to be decrypted on your target's device and vice versa. And you can be sure of their identity. And you can be sure uh, there's integrity, so the message you're supposed to receive is the one you're really supposed to receive. All that fun stuff. So you did this either in person or maybe over the phone, voice, mail, voice video chat, etc. Um, and then once you've done that, you can then obviously verify other things as well. Sweet, so now Nick's verified, so I can be sure my messages are going to where they are supposed to go to, and not to anyone else. Fun. Uh, what else have we had changed as Matrix? We've had further integration of Jitsi into Element and Synapse. So we basically had a conferencing system in Matrix initially, uh, but unfortunately the Matrix Foundation didn't have enough money, so we were forced to kind of integrate Jitsi with uh, Synapse and Element and hopefully other matrix clients uh, really well. So how does it work? Uh, your client, instead of just defaulting to jitsi.riot.net, so that's features. Uh, 
How do we turn it back on? Sorry. The uh, little thing at the bottom of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I'm going to full screen. Screen. That's not screen. Ah, wow. We've got to do that one more time. Okay, we'll um, choose the entire screen. Yeah. Then I need to remember this. Okay. Yeah. Still on? Sweet. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Back in the old day, we had an inbuilt conferencing system, but we kind of depreciated it so that we could use Jitsi instead. Uh, now, in the init initially, there was just one Jitsi server, and it was being run in France. The ping was really bad. Uh, now you can, now your home server will direct you to whatever Jitsi instance you want to use. <coughs> That's a lot better because you can run your Jitsi in your own area, and you don't experience the uh, the lag. It's kind of like Discord where it mixes your voices at the server level, so like your latency of that is going to heavily affect how enjoyable the conference call is, how clear it is, how fast it is. Uh, so, and, and it's integrated to the point where if you have three or more people in a room, the client will bring up the Jitsi instance instead of doing a uh, SRTP encrypted one-to-one -one web call. Um, that's pretty neat. Jitsi demo. Yeah. And for those not familiar with Jitsi, it's for making like video calls and like audio calls and so on. Yeah, think like Skype, except you control the servers in between you and the people you're talking to. Yeah. Or someone you trust, rather, controls the servers. Yeah. Or so, your own servers. Like you can do it with a format just website, but. You could technically use any Jitsi instance you want. But yeah. Yeah, it will direct you to the one the server right thinks is the most So let's give that a go. I'm going to press the video call button. Usually that would do a one to one call, but now it's spawned a Jitsi conference. And instead of having to open another window like we used to, it's nicely integrated into a widget. Oh, it's Is my camera shut up? Yeah. How do you do it? Sweet. Um, would you like to join me? You sure. have to. Yeah, I do all, but... Cool. So now I'm in its uh, Nick in a conference call. Let's have a look what options we have here. Uh, you can share your screen with the user. Raise lobby your hand. Let me close chat. That's stuff that will work. Nick would like to speak. Can't speak. <laughs> You don't mute yourself, leave the call, so I'll the camera, so the tile view, you can invite new people to it, which generates a link. Interestingly enough, uh, if I use this link, it gives me a nice, let's do that, it gives me a nice uh, link to my actual Jitsi instance on the chat. Um, strangely enough, if you press this up here, pop out widget, it, um, Defaults to app.element.io. Uh oh. We haven't really smoothed that out yet. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, what else? Uh, we got security options. Security options, yeah. All right, it's a password to limit to prevent unauthorized participants in this uh, conference. Neat. So, yeah, it's a Jitsi demo. Uh, you can now do conferencing inside any matrix room, and it's pre integrated. Jump back. Hey, that didn't break the blue button this time. Hey, all right. What else have we had new in Matrix? Uh, there are now MA1SD identity servers. Back in the good old days, uh, there was just one identity server, and it was being run by the Matrix project, and it was kind of a big uh, privacy f up because you would put your email or your phone number into matrix account to try and add a third party ID to it. And um, everyone in the world could basically look it up and associate it with you and there was uh, no like there was no control over it really. And all your data was going to you know one server in one place in the world. That's not really the idea of um, 
Now it's better. We have a self-hosted identity servers that you can easily integrate with your uh, Matrix server. And it makes connecting existing on-premise identity stores easier. Easier. There's a few methods uh, in Synapse already to do this, but apparently this is easy. We haven't played with it yet, but um, we'll give it a go. Uh, what else? It's federated. It's kind of like a DNS system where if you choose to, your identity through PIDs like your email or your phone number can be propagated throughout other identity servers so other people can look you up more easily or you can opt out of that and say I only want to share my creepy IDs with people on this server or you can say I don't want to share with anyone, I just want it to be a secret between me and the server. That's a lot better, that's a lot better than what we had before. We also have more home servers being run by uh, famous groups. Firefox has a matrix server now, uh, Matrix E, KDE, Debian, Probably want to join the Debian one, but um, it's developed its own one. Sorry. But that's okay, because due to how Matrix works, you can basically make a both chat or all account, and you can go hang out in the Debian rooms. It's all nicely integrated. Uh, we're also seeing a lot more projects reserving room addresses for themselves. And um, I honestly think like we're seeing like the whole network exponent, which is very exciting. Uh, like the rate of adoption is increasing. Back when I did another talk in 2017, my advice was don't run a matrix server. It is so painful and hard, you shouldn't be doing it. But in 2020, my advice is you should be getting a matrix. Uh, it's, become, it's become dramatically more efficient, and there are way better features, and it's just a lot more enjoyable in general. So if you, have a, if you want to make a matrix server for yourself, or your company, or your organization, or something, now's a good time to do it. You've got uh, my kind of crusty old guide on how to do it on Debian 10. All right. I think the, I think the span to leave Docker deploy setup method, that's probably the gold standard if you want to make your own metric server right now. Very, very easy, and um, it's very, very powerful, and you basically have every single kind of bridge you could possibly imagine your bridge your rooms to Discord, Slack, Facebook, tons of other places. All those tools are built into you, basically. They're just a part of the script already. Um, so that's a good way to do it. Moving on. This city's favorite public matrix server, perfchat.org. We have some updates with it. Let's, let's begin. Perfchat's three years old. Woo! Um, I'm surprised it's lasted this long. It's been migrated four times, and I have managed to not break it yet. <laughs> Right on, right on. What else? Uh, it's been recently been migrated to a UCC member server, so we basically have 50 times the upload. Before we had about enough upload, it's an NBN connection, we had about enough upload for about 50 users before it slowed down. Uh, now we can probably handle a few thousand before it starts to slow down. Uh, extra storage, I was a bit worried about the storage back in 2017, but now we have an abundance of storage. We also have our own Jitsi, as did an address. We also have our own MA1SD identity server, so you don't have to rely on the centralized one. We also have moderation rules. Like a giant advertising thing. <laughs> But that's the term they use. So, here's my dream for Perth chat. Uh, we are currently mirrored to the Perth Discord. I would like to find other Perth communities that are interested in mirroring their community with ours. So you can basically have a room, or your rooms or whatever platform you're using, they can be mirrored on Matrix, so they exist in two places at once, and then you know, participants from both communities can interact with each other through the bridge, basically. Um, so if you are another Perth community out there that wants to bridge with us, uh, consider it. And some people may be thinking, oh, I'd rather have, I'd rather set up my own matrix server and put the rooms on there and bridge those so, so my rooms aren't on your server. But the thing you got to understand about matrix is like rooms don't exist on servers. They're technically decentralized records 
and the portal. You can list a room on many metric servers. Uh, if you have admin accounts at perchat.org, and you do make your own matrix server later on, uh, we can demote those Burchat accounts and promote your accounts so you have like proper control of the room after that point. Uh, what else can we promise you? We can promise you, our, our moderation standards are kind of lax, but whatever your moderation standards are, we can basically conform to them while you're bridged with us for your rooms. Yeah, so consider it. Woo. Okay, now moving on to the the future of Matrix, the stuff that's coming up. <clears throat> so, P2P, ma uh, P2P Matrix, a P2P implementation of Matrix, where basically you can have a client that also acts as a server, like a temporary server, and people you know can hop on and they can interface through the Matrix uh, using that temporary server, basically. Or maybe it's not temporary, maybe you want to run a bit longer. Um, if you're doing, if your internet's been cut, if you're in a part of the world where the government's trying to cut your internet off, this can be particularly handy because you can basically have like a mesh network, and only one node of that mesh network is actually connected to the outside internet. That person can act as the server, the rest of you people can jump on, and you can basically message through um, and circumvent that censorship with it, which is cool. I have worries about P2P matrix. I kind of feel like it's going to enable trolls. Where they've never been enabled, where they can just spin up uh, new servers at their whim and duck around ACL bands, which prevents certain bad servers from inter interacting with rooms. Let's see how it goes. Here's the um, here's basically PUP matrix 0 0.0.1, where they've gotten the Riot Web and they've stuck the new Dendrite server software inside it, and it's basically acting as a server. You can try it out at this URL. Um, I don't even understand half the stuff in this image. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how it works. <coughs> We're also going to have easier migration of uh, matrix identities. Create a, you create an account on a server, you're kind of wondering, oh, I would move over to this other server that I like more, but it's just a pain having to recreate my keys, rejoin all the rooms I'm in, rejoin all the one to one conversations that I'm in. That won't be a thing in the future. You'll just be able to point at the server you want to go to and your account will basically be migrated to there really smoothly. And you'll maintain your keys and you'll maintain the rooms you're in. Um, okay, neat. And it should be possible even if the server you're migrating from is offline. And so here's the interesting thing. We'll be able to set a primary and a backup home server. So if your primary server goes down for a set amount of time, you will be automatically migrated to your backup server, so you won't lose access at all. You know, you keep running. This is cool. We have decentralized rooms, but now we have decentralized identities. What else? Dendrite is finally almost nearly ready to go to the base stage. I said it was coming three years ago. It's still coming. <clears throat> yeah, it's an alternative server software. So you use Synapse initially, but Synapse is a little bit inefficient, although these days it's actually a lot more efficient and you can scale Synapse horizontally. With Dendrite, you won't need to do that. It'll be nice and horizontally scaled out of the box, which is neat. Which is neat. I don't think this is actually the closest software to being uh, the next usable service software, though. Was it Construct? Yeah. Construct, which is written in C++, is, is already in beta stage, so it's closer to being actually used in there. Are, like, there are a few construct servers already up and running and federating successfully with Synapse servers. Uh, we're going to have matrix URI support. If you've ever tried to share a link to an event on matrix, um, it's a bit of a pain because you end up going to this matrix.to site. And it guides people to ins install a server for the first time. With some clients, it'll, ma it'll navigate through that to the actual event that you want to look at. But with some clients, it doesn't. It's not that neat. Matrix URIs will basically provide a, a native way for you to say, hey, look at this event in this room. And if that person already has a client, they'll just be navigated to it automatically. Yeah. That's a lot better than leaning on matrix.to. There's a pull request if you want to check that out. 
What else are we going to have? What else are we going to have? A layer hash in Meteor Mets. Uh, layer hash is a compact representation of a placeholder for an image or video. Uh, currently in Matrix, you need to wait for the server you're connected to to feed you a thumbnail. That can take a few seconds, which is a bit slow. With the blur hash, it'll basically give you like a pre pre preview. And um, you'll see the output of the blur hash first, and then your thumbnail will be loaded in two seconds, five seconds, whatever it takes later. And it'll make uh, it'll make the process of viewing previews for images and links and so on videos a uh, lot quicker. So it'll just happen instantly because um, that blood hash gets passed with the event. That's going to be it. What else? That's it. Future proposals. Uh, check out the proposals to the spec. Um, lots of more cool stuff coming up. And, uh, yeah. Moving on to the commercialized part of the presentation, uh, we are starting a new venture. What is it? Chat Oasis, the limited liability company. Uh, it will be a matrix hosting company targeting businesses and public organizations. It will have open infrastructure that's licensed under the AGLPB3 license. And uh, our goal with it is to lower the barrier to running your own matrix hosting company so you don't have to recreate all the infrastructure tools for yourself. You can just copy us. And it'll basically be an open source alternative to modular element hosting, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> If you think this is cool, feel free to follow us on uh, GitLab. Um, you can see it being made, basically. How it's going to work. Let me change the slide. We're going to have a, an AWX tower. What that basically is, it's like a, it's a control tower that uses Ansible, the automation language. Uh, and it will basically help you manage entire fleets of matrix servers. It will simplify configuration, updates, backups, moderation, and more. Uh, it will also have an API that allows you to connect a uh, commercial front end to it so you can start your own matrix hosting company a lot easier, basically. <clears throat> That'll be fun. We are hiring. Elements hiring. We're hiring too, okay? Um, are you a tech savvy lawyer who specializes in any of the following? GDPR law or Australian law? Um, if you're a lawyer that's familiar with GDPR law, that's great. You can help us make our product compatible with GDPR legislation. If you're an Australian lawyer, that's also great. You can help us open up class action lawsuits against uh, sectors of Australian society that should probably be using internet encryption, like the legal field and the medical field. We need you. Consider contacting us for a chance to be a shareholder and a board member. Think about it. You have a substantial share of this company. You sue people so it gets mandated in society where the only people selling this technology, what happens there, right? <laughs> Kaboom! My, my, my! No, no, no! So yeah, contact us if you think that's a neat idea. <clears throat> oh, also, privacy and free software advocates only. You're probably not a lawyer, but we're looking for a special one. Basically. Other ways you can help us out. If you're a developer who thinks this is a neat idea, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can use all the help we can get. If you're an investor, also feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we don't exactly need startup funds, but hey, maybe you want to write me a check anyway, right? Look at the interest rate. It's pretty low. You might as well give me money today. Yeah? Uh, feel free to email us as well. <clears throat> well, that's about it, really. Matrix in 2020. Thanks for coming. Um, I'll see you all again in six months for my upcoming Joe Rogan interview. <laughs> or if I have to settle, my Tim Dillon interview. Thanks. Uh, so join us on Matrix for more privacy, more security, more fun, more Nazis, more action, more adventure, and more community spirit. Thanks for watching Matrix in 2020. Bye. <laughs>
obviously we've we've heard sort of the history of ProChat and, and a lot of the stuff that's happening with Matrix, but I just wanted to emphasize um, what is being built uh, in the form of Matrix is something that's very exciting and um, perhaps the most exciting thing is how little we will have to care about the underlying details soon. Um, so it's already to the point where you can join a Matrix server and have a really great experience and have privacy and, and encryption, data sovereignty, all these great things. Um, so if you're interested at all in, in, in Matrix, definitely sign up to like press chat if you want. You can sign up to the like official Matrix home server. It's all good. You can migrate around later. Another popular first server is uh, jamawalk.net. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like a sibling server. Um, it's a good one too. But it's only going to get better. So, you know, right now it's comparable in terms of usability to something like Discord. You know, it could use a bit more polish and so on, but like, you know, things like Signal and WhatsApp has sort of taken the easy way out and, and doesn't solve a lot of the stuff that Matrix actually solves. And so, you know, it's been a long road. There's been a lot of tooling and development needed to get Matrix to where it is today, but it's just going to get better and better and better. So definitely do check it out. It's probably my favorite way to do communication nowadays. Um, and if not Matrix, something like it is very likely to be uh, the future of communication. And right now, Matrix doesn't really have any good competitors, so it probably will be Matrix. Just my two cents. Um, thanks very much to Michael for, for the talk. Thank you all very much for coming and, um, and hearing the talk and, uh, you know, checking out plug and this kind of stuff we do. So thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, no questions. Okay, wow. Well, must have done a really good job explaining it. All right, Mark, what did you say like that about uh, Debian the server the matrix? Was only for devs, but you could link and then hang out there. You couldn't post, but you could view. Is that the uh, the way matrix works? Like if you have a room on perchat.org, you don't need to be using perchat.org to interface with it. You can be using any matrix server, and you can basically join the rooms on our server. But yeah. So basically, uh, the rooms on Debian Social. You can browse all of those from any matrix server, and you can join them, and you can PM people on that server. It's all nicely decentralized and connected, basically. Think about email. Yeah, it's kind of like email. So you can email someone on another email it's, server. Right? It's, a it's, it's like email, but if you also had a sort of layer of being able to like find someone's email, um, they can choose how to publish their matrix identity in a way that you can find. Or as you mentioned, they can also choose not to publish their identity, um, and so that sort of applies to rooms as well. As you know, you can you can find lists of rooms on different servers, you can find lists of people, etc. But there's also the option to sort of limit that. So um, you know, some servers choose not to federate with other servers. There are servers out there that have abuse of content, and you can essentially, as a server owner, decide that you don't want to actually federate with those uh, those servers. You have a lot of Power over um, how you know, how how things work. Um, so it does come with challenges, being that it is an actual decentralized uh, federated network. Um, but as I said, you know, in the long run, it will probably start to really overtake other things. Like um, signals, really, signals a great product um, for like one-to-one -one communication and to some extent for group chats. Um, that Signal is still a very centralized service and you're still relying on a lot of different people in order to have your privacy and your security. Whereas with Matrix, you can, you can have not only your own open source client that you can verify, but you can also have your own server that you can verify or someone else's server that you can verify. It's, it's a lot closer to true freedom and sovereignty than pretty much any other product out there. Um, and the point I would add is um, Signal received a gag order from the US government back in like 2015. I have not received a gag order. I'm free to still run my mouth. So, yeah. <coughs> Do you have anything else? I mean, <laughs> no. Get on it. It's good. Make your own magic server or your own account today. Thanks.
everyone. Doing, everyone? Um, feel free to stick around and, and chat. Um, I think we're still here till. Um, yeah, I think we're still.